really like. Thank you for being with me at this moment. And if you're viewing this at a later date through the archives, uh, thank you for watching and hope you have a good practice. This will be our half a flow flats or intermediate focus practice. A little step up from the foundation level of flats. If you are moving through this practice with me, also remembering no pressure or force. This practice will be a little more engaged, so always come in as far as you're comfortable. If you ever feel like you've gone too far, come back a step from there. Be in whichever way is necessary for you as you begin the practice in a lifted spine. See the position with the cross legs as best you can. If it's comfortable for you, you can adopt a mudra, hand gesture, thumb and index finger together as one such variation. Another variation is one hand resting on top of the other. Sit as tall as you can. Eyes closed and a mouth closed. And we're just going to take a few moments. Allow yourself as much time as you need to really land and to arrive. As you work towards creating a little space for yourself, space for your practice, don't try and push away any thoughts. You're not trying to fight or wrestle the mind into being present. Allow thoughts to pass, allow thoughts to arise even, and then allow thoughts to pass. encourage your awareness to join you in the room by becoming aware of sound not overly concerned with the origin of the sound just welcome sound what arises from around you bring your awareness a little closer to home as you check in through the physical body how does physical body feel any areas of holding, of tension, or if body feels good. Making a similar inquiry into the condition of the mind. How is your day being? How is that influencing the mind? This attuned awareness will softly become conscious of the breath. And will simply just witness and experience the breath without trying to create at the very centre of the belly. Just notice body's response to breath at the belly. Notice how the belly arises with the incoming breath. And how the belly falls with the outgoing. As the belly rises, mentally repeat, breathing in, on the turn of the breath, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. As the mind begins to wander, the sounds, thoughts, sensations. Each time bring it back. Breathing in. wanders, bring it back, breathing in, breathing out, Namaskar Mudra. If it's comfortable for you, hands to lightly press in front of the chest. 
As you take a moment, set an intention, your sankalpa, or dedication prayer practice. Release your hands. Chin to the chest. And a few gentle blinks opening the eyes. Namaste. Now softly raise the knees up. Raising the knees high, drawing the thighs in towards the chest. You can be behind your thighs, you can go for a shin or a knee, or you can go for a wrist or a forearm. Choose which is best. They're very comfortable. You can elevate one foot up, this feels good. Raise the other foot up, but no force or fight. Feet can be grounded. If you haven't already done so, begin to put your conscious effort into your breathing, in through the nose, out through the nose, as best you can. You can remain as you are, but if all is well, perhaps you release the clasp of the hands. Still good, extend the arms in line with the ears, palms to press, so heel of palm, base of fingers and pads of fingers. Very comfortable, turn the gaze slightly up. If you have any pressure in your neck when turning up, have the gaze straight ahead, don't force. Likewise, any challenge in the shoulders, your hands can be as low as you need to, hands apart if required. Little practice in line with the ears, further practice palms to press, then gaze to thumb. Just a few steady breaths. Exhale, release, smoothly release the hands. Release the feet, in whichever way is necessary for you. We'll come all the way up, coming to standing. We'll work towards the front for a mat. A foot's distance or so from the front of the mat. Feet together, toes and heels to touch. Come into Tadasana for a moment, so your mountain pose. Hands to the sides of the body, the gaze is front, chin sets a little back. Once you're in Tadasana, you know how you're sharing the way. Endeavour to share it evenly. That light engagement begins through the base of the pelvis and the lower abdominal, and the breath flows. We'll mentally prepare for a few rounds of your sun salutation. No pressure or force, breathe as much as you need to if you can coordinate the movement of breath. Namaskar asana, hands together, head center, palms to press. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, Urdh Bahasta. Smoothly begin to extend the arms. In line with the ears if you can. A very mild bend in the knees. Talking of the pelvic, gentle back bend. A slight gaze up, but no pressure on the neck. Your next exhale, palms to face front. Hips push a little back. And work front from the front of the hip man. Falling deeply. Hands either side of the feet, whether you're on fingertips or the palms, or release your head. Your next inhale, step the right leg back, a good distance. Ground the knee on top of the toes, gaze is front. Your next exhale, top the toes, lift the knee. Left knee, right, doe pada, the plank pose. Hold the breath out as you ground the knee, squeeze the elbows close, take your time. Welcome thighs, belly, chest and forehead. Shoulders are slightly rolled and the hip tucks a little bit up and back. Your next inhale, gaze front. Shift front a little first and raise the head and chest. Shoulders roll and tuck the toes. Bhujangasana. Exhale, tuck the toes. Bend the knee. Push the hip up and back. Maintain the good distance between the hands and the feet. Bend the knees a little as you inhale. Step the right foot front. Helping hand if you need to. There's no rush. Getting it all the way there. Your knee is over the ankle. Ground the left knee on top the toes. Exhale, tuck the toes. Left knee, right, feet together, falling deeply. A good bend of the knee. Arm in line with the ears, palms to the face, inhale, smoothly up. Keeping the knees a little bent as bring the palms to press, then tuck the pelvic, slight back bend, gently gaze up. Exhale, Tarasana. Namaskar Asana. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, Ojra, extend it, bend the knee, slight back bend. Exhale, work front from the hip, hands out the side of the feet. Inhale, the left leg, ground the knee, on top the toes. Exhale, top the toes, right to meet left, do a para. 
Retain the breath, knees, elbows close, thighs, belly, forehead, roll the shoulders, slightly tuck the hip. Inhale, raise to Bhujangasana on top the toes. Exhale, tuck the toes, bend the knee, hip up and back, Buddhasana. Inhale the left, if it gets stuck, give it a helping hand, no rush. Go around the right knee, on top the toes. Exhale, tuck the toes, right knee, left, feet together, falling deeply. Good bend in the knee. Inhale, feel the mark all the way up. Knees remain soft, gentle back bend. Exhale, Tadasana, Namaskarasana. Inhale, exhale, inhale, extend. Exhale, working front. Inhale, the right. Exhale, plank pose. Hold the breath on. Sashtangasana. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, Bhujangasana. Inhale, right. Exhale, falling deeply. Inhale, Urdhva. Exhale, Tadasana. Namaskarasana. Inhale, exhale. Inhale. Exhale. The forward fold, good distance between the feet, shoulder distance, toes pointing ahead, hands on the hips, knees a little soft, take an inhale, exhale, work front from the hip, gaze okay, slightly front but no pressure on the neck, feels good, work beyond parallel, grab the big toes, middle finger, next and thumb, palm to face, next inhale, lift and lengthen, on the exhale, folding deeply, this pelvic drawn, lower belly drawn, 
work from the hip. Each exhale, little deeper, but no fun. Next inhale, lift and lengthen, gaze is front. Adjusting your feet from Malasana. For some, we'll turn the toes out just a little. For others, perhaps the heels will raise. If it feels good and it's accessible, you can maintain the clasp of the big toe. Then releasing down from here. The spine is lifted, chin is a little back. If necessary, the feet can come in closer and you can allow the heels to raise. Don't force for depth. A long and steady breath. Next inhale, smoothly raise the hip up, readjust the feet so the shoulder distance apart in parallel, lift the chest. As you exhale one at a time, place the hands, the tips of the fingers or the entire palms underneath the feet, folding deeply. Each exhale, explore a little further depth, no pressure in the neck, no dizziness. Next inhale, lift the head, concave the back slightly. Bringing the hands to the hips one at a time. Keep the knees a little soft, so gentle bend. As you inhale, raise your torso towards parallel to the mat. I will be here for a moment. If this is challenging, you can be anywhere a little higher or as much as you need to. You can bend the knees a little further. You're thinking knee directly over the ankle as best you can. But no pressure, steady breath. hands and the hips if it feels good however extend the arms to the alignment with the ears we'll endeavor to maintain this alignment as you inhale come all the way up stand nice and tall really lengthen it exhale release that Shoulder height with the palms face down. Tadasana. Feet together, toes and heels to touch, sharing even weight between the feet. Choosing a point in front of your focus will bring the hands and the hips. Bend the right knee, lift the heels. Feel your weight switch entirely to the left one. Now you can be here and build your practice on this point. If this is successful, raise the right thigh up. You're thinking almost parallel to the mat. But note if you're leaning back to achieve this, if you're collapsing and rounding to achieve this, if necessary, the leg lower, the spine is lengthening. Focus on your point. This is good here, little hand support. You can softly draw the knee out to the side. And be there for a moment. But recognize as you draw the right knee out as the left knee, the left hip pop in front. Only bring the knee out to the side where you can maintain front of hip square. Spine is still lifting. center, releasing the right leg, right hand back to the hip, maintain focus on your point. Beautiful. Now, if this feels good, you can work from this point, hands, both hands can remain on the hips, if all is well, however, extend your left arm front. Then bend the right knee generously, but keeping the knee up, Bending the knee generously, trying to bring the heel to the bum as best you can. Then this is good, you release the right hand down 
and you can clasp the right ankle. If necessary, the leg can crawl to the side to get the clasp, then bring the knees and the thighs a little closer. You can be as you are, this is a beautiful work. But if all is well, then slide arch through the upper back. When this is good, you begin to kick the right leg a little out behind and lean a little front from the hip. Note as you lean front that you're not extending the right leg out to the side. Keep the hip square. Keep that length in the spine, not compressing on one side. Focus on your point and breathe. Inhale, smooth your back, bending the right knee generously. Keeping the heel close to the bum as you can, release the right hand to the hip, release the left hand to the hip, raise the right thigh high, in front, exhale, release the right, to meet the left, feet together, share that even weight. Returning to your focused point, bending the left knee, lift the heel as feel a weight switch over to the right foot, balance as best you can. Little practice, lift the left, left foot a little off the mat, still good. You raise the highest thighs you can to the point you can maintain this length. Trying to avoid that leaning back or rounding motion. Any pressure on the right knee? Little bend a little. As well, the assistance of the left hand, it can be underneath the thigh, or maybe you're going for more of the knee or the shin. Begin to open up the left knee to the side, left leg to the side, but only to the point you can maintain a straight line across from the hip. Few steady rise. center as best you can release the clasp with the left hand from the knee returning to the waist the thigh is lifting spine is lengthening below the navel is gauged beautiful still good you're just playing around with your practice the right hand can maintain on the hip feels good extended in front further practice keep the left knee up but bend at the knee Heel to the bum as best you can. Then release the left hand down. If necessary, you can fold slightly from the waist or leg out to the side, clasp the ankle or the shin. Then drop the knee down to her left knee is almost level with the right. Feels good, mild expansion in the chest. Further practice, begin to raise the left leg away from the body, behind, kicking it behind. Hinge a little front from the hip. You're aware that you're not sending it out to the side. Hip remains square, focused on your point. Inhale, smoothly back, bring the left knee back to meet the right, but keep the heel close to the bum. Release the left hand to the hip, release the right hand to the hip as you continue to inhale, raise the left thigh high. Exhale, release. Left foot to meet the right, come back to Tadasana, even way between the feet, share the best you can. Next inhale, take the arms out to the side. Shoulder height, flip the palm. Bring the arm in line with the elbow. Shoulders are relaxed. Sternum is back. Your next exhale, fold to your right. Feels good, push the hips a little to the left. But as you fold, mind that the right hip isn't swinging in front. Keep the hips squaring. That straight line across the hip. Mindful of the trussing of the ribs. Ribs are set back a little. If this is a challenge, don't fight. Hands over the sides of the body is beautiful work too. Little practice, build towards extending the arms. Inhale, raise tall, shoulders are relaxed, sternum is back. Exhale to your left. Very comfortable hips, push a little to your right. But never fighting for depth. 
The intention is feeling and experiencing a stretch starting at the right hip, working its way up the side of the body. If you feel it more in the front of your back, it means they're slightly twisting. Check in with your hips. Hips in a straight line across. Steady breath. Inhale back, lengthy spine. If you're not at the front edge of your mat, I'll encourage you to be at the front edge of your mat. And foot's distance, just like at the start of the Surya Namaskara. Lengthening it tall. Next exhale, palms to face front. One pushes it back a little as you work from the front of the hip line. Folding deeply. Hands either side of the feet, fingertips or the palms as best you can. And release the hip. Each exhale a little deeper. Inhale, lift and lengthen and gaze as front. Perhaps take your hands a little further in front of the feet. Take your feet. If you've got hip distance apart a little wider as you prepare for malasana and squat pose. Choose an appropriate distance between the feet for you. Heels are welcome to raise. Perhaps if the heels are raising, have the feet more at hip distance. When all is well and you feel comfortable. Releasing down, hook the arm down the shin as best you can, then lift the spine, set the chin back a little, few steady breaths, but no fight, recognize the reaction through your ankle, through your knee and through your hip, don't fight for a neck. inhale raise your hip up raise it up rather high initially if your feet were closer you need to take your feet wider apart almost shoulder distance the first point to note is the knee over the ankle this is the first alignment point that we want to try and maintain the hips are nice and high then from there begin to drop the hip down so you're dropping the hip down to the eventual intention of hip being in line with the knee but the knee still maintained almost over the ankle once you've achieved your comfortable edge the point that you're able to maintain then draw the chest down so hooking the arm down the shin, and be here for a few breaths, but don't fight. Lengthen the breath. As it gets more challenging, the breath goes longer. Pressure in the neck, you find any pressure, drop the chin a little. No fight. Exhale, Malasana. Best you can, squatting back down, no pressure, adjusting the knees and adjusting the feet rather as is necessary. Release the hands to be in front of the feet, almost shoulder distance apart. Then walk your feet back into Adho Mukha Shonasana, the downward facing dog. Good distance between the hands and the feet. Any pressure on the shoulder, lower back, working with more of a bend in the knees. You can take rest at any moment, a little practice if you're working towards the straighter legs, but never fully locking out the knees. Spread the fingers, share the even weight in the hands. Beautiful. Bring your feet together, center of the mat. This feels good. Let's raise the right heel a little, so a little bend in the right knee. See if you can share it even way in the hands and know that your shoulders are coming front. Can you maintain that wrist to hip alignment? 
This is accessible, raise the right foot a little, all is well, raise it high. Allow the left heel to work towards the mat, but no pressure on the front of the ankle. Beautiful. Next exhale. Then really well at the right knee. Step the right foot hand, the right foot through. Close to the right hand on the inside edge. Then ground the left knee and on top the toes. Any pressure on the left knee, double over the mat as you need to from the front or from the side even. This feels good, so if you're raising up. Raising up, hands are resting on the right thigh. We'll maintain the quite generous bend in the front leg with the intention of having the knee over the ankle. If this feels steady for you here, you're welcome to extend the arms up, pass the press and lightly gaze to the thumb. As you do so, recognize if you're lifting your ribs to achieve this. So keep the ribs as strong and then subtly back. Work more from pushing the hip. Next exhale, softly release the hands. You release the hands, the inside edge of the right foot as best you can. Keep the hip pushing. If this is accessible for you here, heel toe the right foot out towards the right edging of the mat. And once there, turn the right foot out slightly. So perhaps the toes are just a touch off the mat and the heel remains on the mat. If this feels good, perhaps you come front onto your forearms for a moment. But don't fight for them. Recognize if the hips are pushing back and up, as best you can, allow the hip to sink down. If it's a challenge to come to the forearm, don't fight for this step. You could be working out one arm down and one arm straight, building towards both forearms down. Super, this is good. If you've gone to the forearms, softly come back to the hands. Keep the hip pushing. All is well, bend the left knee. Good bend in the knee. Now you can remain as you are, this is beautiful work. All is well, reaching back with the right hand. You can grab the foot from the inside. So the right hand is grabbing the left foot from the inside. Often we'll push back here, the hip will hike up. You can keep the left hip pushing front as you go for the clasp. You can open up your chest to the right if necessary, so you can square your shoulders to the right, then reaching the right hand around, go for the clasp, but please don't force, don't jerk. Allow the hip to push down. Feels good, you draw a little closer. Beautiful reaction, the front of the left hip, down the thigh, but no fight on the knee. Clasp, softly release the clasp, bring the right hand back, then straighten the left leg, tuck the left toes, lift the knee, the right back and meet the left, into Adho Mukha Svanasana, your downward facing dog, the good distance maintained, know that you can take rest at any moment by grounding your knees, the resting warrior is always welcome, mindfully applying your mouth. Super. Feet together at the centre of the mat. Bend the left knee lightly so the heel raises a little higher up off the mat. Can you share that even weight in the hands, the torso back towards the thigh? Little practice, raise the left foot a little higher. Then to the point where you're comfortable. Release the right heel to the mat, but no pressure on the front of the right ankle. Even weight in the hands, still a lengthy spine. Beautiful. This is good here. Bend the left knee generously. One smooth step or a few steps. Step the left leg front. Knee over the ankle. Scoot it all the way front until you achieve this angle as best you can. Then grow the right knee on top of the toes. Double over a mat for a sense of the back knee. When it feels good, we'll raise up. We'll maintain knee over ankle alignment. Big as you are with the hands and the thighs. 
Arm in practice. Extend the arms and line with the ears. Pull out the ribs. Ribs maintain a little back. You feel steady. Lightly gaze the thumb. No pressure on the neck. Push the hip. Exhale, release the hands. Both hands inside to the left leg, left foot even. Heel toe your left foot towards the left edging of the mat. Once you've arrived at the edging, turn the left toes out slightly, the heel remains where it is. Now you can be as you are, a little practice, maybe it's one forearm coming down, and the other arm slightly bent or straight, then a little further practice, both arms down. But recognize the reaction on the outer edge of the knee, outer and inner edge rather. Don't fight for depth, straight arms builds your practice. Recognize are the hips hiking up, or kind of the hips sinking down a little. Super. So, keep coming back onto the hands, if you've gone beyond that is. And all is well here, mindful of the reaction of the back knee as you bend it, if the knee is sensitive. But bend the right knee as best you can. Good, bend the knee. Be here for a moment. Are the hips hugging back? Can you keep them working front? Now this is good, you can bring your left hand to your left hip. Let's go and try and square your shoulders, open up your chest towards the left side. If that is accessible, reach the left hand back, and you're grabbing the right foot from the inside edge. And you can be here. The chest can face towards the left side. Very comfortably, you can draw the right heel a little closer to the bum, but keep the hips sinking down. Recognize the response now on the front of the right thigh, in the hip, a long steady breath. the clasp of the right foot, bringing the left hand back to the mat, then straighten the right leg. Right toes are tucked, raise the knee, left back towards the right, Adam Upishanasana, the downward facing dog. Knee even weight, hands and feet, below the navel is active, and gaze is down. Next inhale, maintain the distance between the hands and the feet, bring the shoulders over the wrists. If this is a challenge for you here, please don't fight to maintain. Ground the knees as you need to, little practice are up, sternum's a little drawn back, gaze slightly front. Don't fight for depth, mindfully build your practice. Next exhale, come down whichever way is necessary for you. Ground the knees first if required, smoothly lower to the mat. Once you're grounded, untuck your toes, feet together, toes and heels to touch. You can work with Bhujangasana, the cover pose in your current position with the hands either side of the chest. If you're mindfully applying, however, take your hands behind and interlace the fingers. Face the pelvic, buttock muscle lightly engaged. As you inhale, roll the shoulders, raise head a small distance, then raise through the upper, middle and maybe the lower back and be here for a moment note that you're not dropping the back of the head to the upper back you keep the length in the spine breathe long and soft Next exhale, smoothly down. 
Release the boy into the hands, and interlace with the fingers, but maintain the hands on the sides of the body. Take the feet, be about hip distance apart or a little wider. Recognize the steps, and you're welcome to be at any. This is accessible for you here, you're bending at the knee, heel toward the bone. Now you can be here and work from this point, but if all is well over, reach back with one hand, grab an ankle or a shin, mindfulness at the foot, working towards the ankle or the shin, and the same with the opposite side. As you do so, recognize what happens to the front of the hip. Often in this instance, the pelvis will tilt front, creating a little compression in the lower back and space the front of the hip. So as best you can, front of the hip pushes into the mat as a slight tuck of the pelvis. Very comfortable, the intention is the full variation of Daniel Asana, raising up the head, the chest and the legs. If there's any challenge in the through the lower back, perhaps you're working with just raising the chest. Don't fight for a depth. As you inhale, Raise the head, raise the chest, roll the shoulders, and raise the thighs. You can be here for a few steady breaths. Now you can maintain as you are, but if all is well, perhaps you have a quick look to your right. If there's no solid objects in your way, softly roll to your right. You keep the legs kicking away from you, so you're still maintaining that bow shape of the Damirasana. If it's comfortable for your neck, gaze to your left, but don't fight. Legs are still active, kicking into hands. Breathe, Parshva Damirasana. Next inhale, as best you can back to centre. If you have the space in your left, you're rolling to your left side. Kick the legs away from the body. If your heels are close to the bum, this is very hard to maintain the balance. You can often roll back to centre. Keep the legs kicking away as best you can. Maintain that beautiful expansion of the chest. Feels very comfortable. Look to your right, right shoulder. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, coming down. Take care. Once you're fully grounded, release the clasp of the leg. Straighten the legs out. If you can keep the feet hip distance apart or so, bringing the hands in line with the chest, you're welcome to push up, then back whichever way is required for you. Little practice as you inhale. Raise the head, raise the chest. Roll the shoulders. Feels good. Begin to employ the hands a little. Are the shoulders rolling in? Can you keep the chest opening? Very comfortable pressure as the tops of the feet, the knees can raise and the chest lifts through a little further to get slightly up. Your next exhale, you can ground the knees, tuck the toes, push the hip up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, the lower facing up. Be here. Even way between the hands and the feet. Beautiful. Bending your knees a little, gaze front. Coming front, whichever way is necessary for you, you can walk your legs front, crossing one leg at a time. Feels good in this part of your practice. Little hop front, but don't fight. Coming front, whichever way is required for you. We'll take the legs out in front. Sitting nice and tall, shoulder over the hip as best you can. Heels are pushing away. And then bend the right leg. Bring in the heel, close to the buttock muscle as best you can. The right foot is about a fist distance away from the left thigh. So the space between the right foot and the left thigh. The left leg's a little active. Very comfortable. Left hand rests on the left side. Bring the right arm inside out of the right leg. Now you can work from here. You can begin to stretch front from this point here. With both hands grounded. If comfortable, however, the left hand for a brief moment can support the right shin. You can stretch a little front and you're trying to hook the right upper arm down the right shin, even the armpit working towards. Then this is good, the back of the left hand can rest on the right ankle, or the right hand can rest on the right ankle. Feels good, work towards the hip. Now if this feels steady, no pressure in your shoulders, no pressure in your neck, you can reach left arm around, the left hand come to the left hip. If it feels good, both hands come together. If they are together, the right hand is clasping the left. Shoulders square, each inhale a little length, each exhale a little depth. Now fully front. 
To the point it's achievable for you, but no pressure of work. Stay active in your practice. the bind if you're there. This is good here, we'll keep the bend in the left knee or the right knee even, we'll raise the right foot up and we'll fold the leg behind, toes point straight back. And this is good, you open the knee to the side. The intention is the 90 degree between the inner thighs and the groin. If this is a challenge, you can also leave the right knee to drop out to the side from the original position and the foot resting against the left thigh. If all is well, however, you can, we're welcome to clear off folding the leg behind. Spine is lifted as best you can. The left leg, so the legs out in front is very active, toes to the ceiling, heel pushes away. Lifting the spine, then get a little twisted to your right. So you're twisting in the direction of the folded leg. Now you can recognize the steps. You're welcome to beat in. So this is beautiful work and you can maintain this point. All is well, however, the left hand, palm faces up, releases onto the inside edge of the left leg, towards the thigh or towards the calf muscle. Chest still open. Right hand can come to the hip or the waist. If you feel steady, however, extend the right arm in line with the ear, palm is down. And as you exhale, you hinge to the left from the waist. As you fold, you're keeping that chest open as if you were upright in a twist. And little by little, you're reaching your hands towards the left foot. If the left hand comes to the foot, trying to ground the elbow first. Then the right arm comes over, gazing underneath the right arm if it's, if it's comfortable even for the neck. Lay there. Breathe. Inhale, smoothly back, coming all the way up, little twist to your left. Exhale through the center. Maintain the back leg folded, best you can, bending the right or the left leg. So the left foot is coming onto the right thigh. If your right foot was, child, if your right leg was folded originally in the position out in front, you can bend the left knee now and come into a cross leg position and fold front. Or sorry, apologies, twist to your left. We'll take the left hand to your left side and behind. Right hand hooks over the thighs, inhale, sit tall, ribs are back. As you exhale, twist to your left. So if your right leg, isn't folded behind you, you can bring the left leg into a cross leg position with the right and then gently twist to your left. Beautiful. Next inhale, smoothly back to center. If you're in the double fold, if with the leg folded behind, taking the both hands either side of the left knee, allow the right heel to work a little bit away from the buttock muscles, create a little space. Then this is good, raise the right knee, raise the right foot. Without leaning too far away from the leg, trying to keep the spine relatively centered, bringing the right leg up in front, keeping the leg lifted. Taking the right hand outside of the left, the right hip and behind, left hand outside of the left hip and behind, then raise the left leg up also. There's many variations of depth you can be at. You can be here, shins working towards parallel to the mat, spine lifting as best you can. If this is challenging, alternate leg to build your practice. If comfortable, extend one arm, then the other arm, and work towards straighter legs. Focus completely on your toes. Now we're already halfway there. Just 30 seconds. Breathe long and soft. Beautiful. This is good. Bending just of the left knee. Then grounding of the right foot. Left heel close to the bum as best you can. Left foot, fist distance away from the right thigh. Bring the left arm to you on the inside edge of the left leg. You can be easier. You can work from this point in the fold. But if comfortable, the right hand will clasp the left shin for a brief moment. Then you hook the left upper arm down the shin as best you can. Almost the armpit works down the shin. Then the back of the left hand can go for the left ankle. Feels good, it's at the back of the left hip. The right comes around from its own side, and around for the side behind, bringing the arms together. 
as you inhale create leg as you exhale fold in deeply the right leg is very active recognize if the leg is dropping out to the side the toes are pointing away from you can you bring the leg back to center so toes are towards the ceiling and the heel pushes away breathe Inhale smoothly back, coming all the way up. Lengthy spine, releasing the clasp of the hands. The first variation here is allowing the left knee to drop out to the side, the left foot resting against the right thigh. If that's accessible, however, you can fold the left leg behind, toes point straight back, then open up the leg to the side so you're creating that 90 degrees in between both legs. No matter where you choose to be, which variation, inhale, you sit tall, exhale, get a little twisted to your left. You can be with this twist, this is beautiful work. If it feels good, however, we build a little further. Right hand inside of the right leg to thigh or calf muscle. Left hand to the hip. Left arm in line with the ear if it still feels good. A little further practice, hinge to the right from the waist, keeping the chest opening. Reaching right hand towards the right foot and left hand towards the right foot. But you can be anywhere before that. If very comfortable, you've no strain on your neck, gaze underneath the left arm. A little practice working towards that. Long and steady breath. Inhale smoothly back, coming all the way up. Into a little twist to your left. Exhale through the center. If you're in the first variation, softly bend the right knee and come into a cross leg position as is necessary for you. If you're with the leg folded behind, you can now bend the right knee also, bring the right foot to rest on the left thigh. Then your right hand to your right side and behind, left hand hooks over the thigh as you inhale, lift, both ribs are back. Exhale, twist to your right. Feels good, the gaze is also following. Each inhale, a little length, each exhale, a little depth. back to center. If you're in a double folded legs with the left leg behind, have both hands or fingertips either side of the right knee. Allow the right heel to move away from the bottom muscle a little. Raise the left knee, then raise the foot. Try not to lean away from the leg too much. Can you stay as centered as you can? Then sweep the leg around and under. Bring in front, left hand, outside the left hip and behind, right hand, outside the right hip and behind. Raise the right leg. Back into Navasana, the boat pose, whichever variation is best for you, knees bent, alternate leg variation. If comfortable, you're raising one hand, feels good the other hand, and focus completely on your toes. But don't force, don't fight. This is good here. Just playing around further with your practice. You can bend the knees, allow them to go to the side to the point you can grab the toes. Now you can be here, focusing on the point in front of you and balancing. Little practice straighter leg, still good straighter again, still good. Working towards straighter leg as best you can. Feels good, you can gaze to the toes or you can gaze up towards the ceiling. But no pressure on the neck. Below the navel is active, lower belly is active, the breath flows. If you have any challenge in the neck, you can softly roll onto your back and have your legs straight up towards the ceiling. If you have no challenge in your neck or throughout the back in general, perhaps you want to play around with coming to a variation of Halasana or 
stuff the Paschimottanasana will slightly rolling back. Making sure there's nothing behind you. You move with an inhale, you drop your chin towards your chest, your knees can be bent. If comfortably work towards straighter legs, but just play it, don't fight. If you do roll back, please do keep your head nice and steady. You're not rolling your head from side to side. Your neck is in line, gaze is to the ceiling. If necessary, bend the knees. If it's a challenge to be here, please don't force. Being on your back, legs straight up towards the ceiling, knees can be bent if required, and hand support as you need to, underneath the bottom if required. Choosing which is best for you. We'll be there for a moment, no matter where you are. You're breathing. If you're all the way up and over, your legs are working towards being straight, but don't fight for depth. Don't jerk while here. Breathe long and soft, base of pelvic, and lower abdominal, still active. No matter where you are, bend your knees generously. If your legs are all the way up over and behind, as you exhale, gently roll down, releasing onto your back, releasing the middle and the lower back, knees and towards your chest, a light rolling. Next exhale, hold the thighs closed, head towards the knees around the spine, nice tight, four times you can. Inhale, release there. Release the legs. Release and rest. The end of your practice. Finding a position that is comfortable for you. For Shavasana, I'll encourage you to maintain a lie down position or be in a seated position. You can be in many variations. You can have the legs straight out, you could have the knees bent. You could be lying on your side, you could be lying on your front. Whichever way is necessary for you to achieve effortlessness. Make the adjustment. When you can feel that body is beginning to arrive, there's a steadiness to be experienced. Welcome stillness. Allow stillness to rise up from the earth beneath you, to permeate through the skin, where it's welcomed by the muscles, the bones, the joints, and this stillness takes up residence deep down in your nervous system. It holds the body. And within this holding, not if there's nothing more required of you. End of your practice. There's no where you need to be, there's nothing to be done. Nobody to plead, nobody to answer to. Simply by allowing yourself to be here is more than enough. And within this beautiful freedom, within this allowing which is at the heart of your yoga nidra, your yogic sleep, set your attention free to move through the land of the deeply resting physical body and note sensations each point that's visited by your awareness. What arises out of the stillness? What arises as a result of your practice? As you begin at the very tip of the tongue, you notice sensation. Allowing your awareness to swirl throughout the space of the mouth until it comes to the back of the throat. Entering the nasal passage to the back of the throat you know what moves upon the breath. What can you smell? What can you sense through the nose? On an exhale, your awareness moves with your breath out through the nose and softly drifts up around the region of the eyes. And you notice any sensation, any pulsing, any vibration around the eyes. Parting the eyes, your awareness sweeps around the sides of the head and enters the ear. Your awareness rests at the most inner part of the ear. 
exploring the outer ear, the peaks and the valley with the outer ear. Coming back to center of body, center of face, at the forehead, and all the way up through to the crown of the head. As you give your awareness now full permission to move through the whole body. As it moves with ease and grace from the crown of the head back down through the eyebrow center, the tip of the nose, the tip of the tongue, the point of the chin, moving down and through the neck until it comes to the base of the throat. Your awareness soft, it moves over through the right collarbone, shoulder, and descends down the right arm through the bicep, elbow, forearm, wrist, palm, tips of fingers any pulsing, any sensation. Returning up through the right arm, through the wrist, the elbow and the shoulder, the collarbone, base of throat, to the left collarbone, shoulder, descending left arm through elbow, forearm, wrist, palm, and tips of finger. Your awareness returns to the left arm, through the palm, wrist, forearm, elbow, shoulder, coming through the center line of the body, through the collarbone to base of throat. Your awareness moves down through the torso, through the breastbone, the center of the chest, through the center point in between the ribs, center of the belly, and all the way down to the meeting of the pubic bones at the center of the pelvis. Your awareness moves at ease to right hip, any sensation, thigh, knee, calf muscle, ankle, heel, sole of foot, top of foot, and each of the right toes. Your awareness returns back up through the right leg, through the top of the foot, sole of the foot, heel, ankle, calf muscle, knee, thigh, hip, through the meeting of the pubic bones over to the left hip and down and through the left thigh, knee, calf muscle, ankle, heel, sole of foot, top of foot and each of the left toes. Returning back and up and through the left leg through the top of the foot sole of the foot, heel, ankle, calf muscle, knee, thigh, hip, back to the meeting of the pubic bones, the center of body, center of pelvis. Allow your awareness to return up and through the navel, center of belly, the meeting point, the center point between the ribs, the breastbone, base of throat, point of chin, tip of tongue, point of nose, eyebrow center, forehead, crown of head. As you bring your awareness to your whole body, your whole body, your whole in this whole body awareness, within the deep rest that holds the body, allow your awareness to rest at the very centre of the navel, the centre of the body, and with your awareness resting here, within the deep stillness that holds the body, notice the response of body to breath at the navel. And the inhale, how the navel rises out of the stillness, the belly rises. And then the exhale, how the navel falls back into stillness, the belly falls. And the inhale, the navel rises. And the exhale, navel falls. Nine. Eight, seven, six,
deeper essence of stillness and true rest as to be experienced. As you reside within this restful moment. you allow the body to remain within this position of deep and nourishing rest, but extend your awareness to beyond the body. And as your awareness extends beyond, allow to transition to a more everyday, a more engaged awareness. Allowing this engaged awareness to influence your breath as it becomes a little fuller a little more conscious. Feel how the breath awakens the body. It stirs stillness. It stirs stillness to the toes, welcoming feet back, fingers, welcoming of the hands, up into the neck where the chin rolls shoulder to shoulder. Feet come softly back together. If it feels good, extend arms up overhead and behind, begin at your feet, point your toes at your feet, turn your legs, take a big inhale, turn your belly, shoulder, finger, top. Exhale, release. Right arm remains extended. Left to the belly. Folding the left knee. Gently roll onto your right side. Take your time. Once you feel steady, pushing up to any seat of variation. Spine lifted, eyes closed. And as you come to the end of your practice, take a moment to note any difference to the start of your practice. Namaskara Mudra, palms are lightly pressed. You're going to begin to rub the palms. Create a little heat. Placing the hands over the eyes, gently cup. And extending a light massage throughout the Entire region of the face. Take the hands a small distance away from the eyes. And gently blink the eyes open, gazing to the palms. Namaste. Thank you all so much. Hope you have a good day. I look forward to seeing you at your next practice.